I sometimes wonder if these uncanny creatures invade the contemporary setting can have the same sort of weird and reorienting, disorienting effect in the modern day, in the current day, viewing a classic Doctor Who serial such as The Web of Fear. In the age of a kind of accepted post-war consensus, certainly in the United Kingdom, you know that the BBC nominally plays education programs and sort of escapist comedies about real world grounded sort of, you know, carry on with life, you know, cup of tea, nine to five, come home, pub, family, wife and kids, Christianity sort of existence, you know, God, King, country, or queen rather, that time. There was a, it was a time of quasi-modest utopian post-empire attempt at bliss. Certainly that's how the media are attempting to, what they were attempting to project onto the population at that time. And so if you wanted an experience of something outside, that's, that was the beauty of genre fiction. It's outlined very beautifully and very influentially, of course, on K-Punk's blog, rest in peace. I'd like to read out this passage here from an article written by Noel Oakeshott. The 20th century is a mythological time in our imaginations, from the decline and collapse of 19th century empires to the fall of the Soviet Union, filled with events and figures that constitute boulders in the historical landscape around which the baseline ideology of society is formed. The Watergate scandal feels equidistant to the present as it was to many of a generation who first heard about it in the early aughts. As has been discussed in far too many places, the 1960s turned culture on its head. But we have just lived through a far bigger upending. In the past, major media organisations had a very palpable oligopoly over the rationalisation of history, and consequently our collective myths. A class of journalists earnestly sought to fashion a linear, comprehensible analysis of a world operating through the erratic movement of billions of individually unpredictable nodes, and depending on your desired outcome, they did a good job. But with the rise of the 24-hour news cycle, the internet, social media, the democratization of culture, and the marketization of celebrity, we have pierced that veil. The confusion, the alienation, the perpetual chaos of how you relate to culture today is an expression of this. You are reading this, and hearing me read it aloud, on an outlet that on every level would not have existed without all the above. This is also in part why Hollywood can't make any stars about with the cultural currency of Leonardo DiCaprio or Natalie Portman say anymore, and in a sense, nobody can. Our collective attentions and our imaginations have been fractured as have the media sources we consume and our cultural references. There isn't an agreed upon outside wherein reality is based anymore. It is simply uh, an ab what, what's more important now is that kind of abstraction where you can project an impression of oneself onto people because that's more important because to, to people because the real world can be lied about or forgotten whereas there's this idea that not what not what is matters, but what other people assume and think is what matters. Not what is true about oneself, but what the impression one gives about oneself. That's considered truer. And why wouldn't it be? We read about people in history books, not from their journals. And people want to be remembered in those history books rather than be forgotten. In a world of such relentless relativity where we cannot agree on what any consensus might remotely look like. It's just difficult to imagine being able to securely, confidently say anything without the assumption that someone somewhere on the internet can hear you say that and take some issue with it because you're expressing enthusiasm and that's either not nihilistic enough or it's not enough uh, an overtly political statement about how to change the world or how to solve the issues. It's not selfless enough, so to say. Or rather, it's not projecting selflessness enough, which is the more important thing, obviously, to the culture right now. I think in the 90s and 2000s, when people were reflecting on pieces of media such as Doctor Who's The Web of Fear or on the Crater Mass works, there was this idyllic, tranquil moment where we felt as though we finally reached an equilibrium end of history. We could just relax in this kind of one foot in the grave existence for the rest of time and admire all the culture that has come before us now that we can view it via the internet and television repeats. Certainly at that time, television repeats. Now it's just all internet and streaming services, probably for the better, frankly. And we can all just watch all the new culture that comes out as well.
through the rest of time and not have to worry about this, that, or anything else. Maybe we could still live that way if we decided to. It's very difficult to live with a certain insecurity now because there's always the, oh, well, I could be doing this. Oh, it's so easy to imagine me putting myself out there and someone having a problem with it and just being like, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Is that worth ignoring or is that worth considering? These are questions I grapple with sometimes. I tend to fall back on, ah, I'm just going to go ahead and do what I want. But you sometimes wonder, what am I missing out on? These are the kind of things which the human race has never fully addressed and probably won't in my lifetime. Thanks again, good and dear friends. Appreciate it very immensely.